Hey friends, it's take three. And I think what we decided is I'm going to do this by myself this week and Beth is going to go live over on her page and we're going to share each other's videos onto each other's pages. So if you don't follow Beth, you'll be seeing it shortly. I'll even post a link to it in the comments of this video and we'll do the same over there. So <clears throat> essentially, we're starting out a Monday and well, let's see, where am I at? Well, I'm in my robe, in my pajamas. See the leopard print jammies, the robe. I decided that today's video is come as you are. And because I think that a lot of people think that you really have to have it together to succeed in this business in all areas of your life, but let's, I just wanna be transparent with you that that's just not really the truth, at least not for me. And, and it's not really the truth for a lot of the leaders that I know especially those of us who've earned six and seven figures. And here's why. Because we are building a business around our lifestyle, right? And so most of the frustration that I face is a result of choices I've made. So for example, some of my frustrations today include we are under construction. There's pounding happening on one end of the house where we do the homeschool. I think that that constant noise irritates the kids, it irritates me, so we're a little more short with each other. Um, we've had the plumbers in and out today, the painters in and out today, like I'm walking around in my pajamas, but I don't care, right? So I decided that today was come as you are and show up and be authentically you. No matter where you're at in your life and whatever's going on behind the scenes. So for me, another frustration was I have this really beautiful new um, gray backdrop, but every time I tried to go live with it, it, the lighting completely changed and washed out my face, just kind of like what just happened there. Do you see how that changes the lighting? And the um, shades aren't up on my office yet, right? I just have bare windows even with, uh, I think they call that, what is that foamy stuff around the windows? Um, it's all exposed. You can see the studs. It's a mess. And my desk is full of stuff because Rob moved everything into the guest room and he moved it all back yesterday <laughs> and I was out of town. So it's so crazy how things can get a little crazy. And then we tried going live three different times. The sound wouldn't work. Um, my son came in and was asking me a question on his math. And I said to him, buddy, I am sorry. I'm getting really stressed out right now. I need you to leave the room because I don't want to be rude to you. And I'll say, I'm going to share that that was very empowering for me to say to him because normally what I would do is talk in an irritated tone if I was feeling more and more stress. But instead, I took a breath and I said, how blessed am I that I get to have a business? I work from home and homeschool my kids. And so there's going to be times that they need me and there's going to be times that I need to set a boundary and say, I need you to give me some space so I don't, don't react in a rude way. Do you guys relate to that? Have you ever felt like everything is just going crazy and like the sky is crumbling? But if you look at it in a different perspective, it won't derail you. So for me today, I really took that approach to my life. I was out of town the last three days in Seattle where we had an incredible local. And I know when I travel, I get tired. And the next three days when I'm home are a little bit more rough because I'm very sensitive to traveling. And I love traveling, but it makes me a little, I don't sleep as well. And so then I tend to be more emotional in general. And yesterday was super sad because we had to put one of our horses down. Two weeks ago, our cat disappeared. I think she was eaten by coyotes. And then one of my other horses that we'd had for 12 years, but given to a family with a young boy, colicked and died. So in the last two weeks, I'm telling you, things in my life have been a little crazy. We've lost three of um, my heart, soul animals. And I've been traveling and we had the holidays and, 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 right? But so much gratitude because again, we created the life that has created some of the stress. And so always keeping the perspective that I played a hand in what I've created has given me the ability not to have a meltdown. And yes, tears were shed yesterday and sadness and that's part of life. And so thank you for your heartfelt messages. I've received a lot of them from those of you that I shared that with yesterday. Um, but I'm telling you, I'm still motivated. 
I still have my list of people that are reaching out today to that are ready to start their Thrive experience. They just need to hear from me that I have some information for them, right? I'm going to answer their questions. So uh, I think it was yesterday because we're doing that big cash promo with Maria and Sheila as a team. When you have a team of five, you keep track of all of your new customer and promoter orders each week, and then you get to be entered into their cash drawing every week. So I've been working with my team of five, and that's Kevin and Claudia and Carmel um, and Laura Wells. And all of us have increased our activity of new orders every week while we've joined this this promo and it's kind of fun because we hold each other accountable we all are running for it together we've made the commitment to improve each week yeah it would be awesome to win but we're also big leaders of big teams and so it's cool because we get to use the time to motivate one another hold each other accountable um, track our numbers because what you focus on grows and you get to move the needle oh that reminds me see this whiteboard behind me what's written on it Nothing. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because when I was in Seattle, my precious boys erased it and decided to make their own Christmas drawings. And then Andrew, my oldest, my 14-year-old son, has started a YouTube channel. I mean, basically, he's just learning from me and Rob, right? So he started his YouTube channel, and he decided he needed to make a tutorial video for his followers and teach them how to draw a saltwater aquarium. So he erased my whiteboard with all of my business and business plans and goals and put his um, aquarium drawings on there and then made this YouTube video. So you can check it out on this channel if you're curious, but uh, it sounds pretty cool. He already knows how to edit video and put clips together. I still don't even know how to do that. But I, at first I was frustrated. It was very disgusting, dirty, you know, everything was erased. And then I realized what an opportunity because now I'm starting with a clean slate. I'm going to be writing names up here of new people that are ready to feel their best, that are ready to go for their goals. Do you see? Like, so I could have been frustrated, but instead I was like, what a blessing. My son has this um, vision for what he wants to create in the world. He has taken the steps to make that happen. Now, granted, he could have asked me first, but he didn't. He's 14. What do you expect? And um, clearly he needs a whiteboard for Christmas and his own ring light with camera stand like this one here that we're, you're seeing me use today. Do you see the reflection back here? It creates that light, which when I do that, it washes me out. It's so weird how that camera works. But anyway, um, I think my husband needs a ring light too because everyone keeps taking my ring light to another room. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a funny, interesting situation when you are in a family of entrepreneurs building businesses online. Insane. So um, one of the things I want to visit with you all about today are um, four key points that I want to help you review in terms of your mindset around your business. Whether you're with us in Laval or you're in your own network marketing business, you're welcome on this video because these principles will apply to everybody. Can you guys hear me okay? Are we still having issues with sound? If you're here, please say hello and what is your weather like today? I'm looking at a blizzard and it's come as you are day. I'm in my robe. I've got my jammies on. Um, I, was, I got to sleep in deliciously until 8.30 when Noah, my 11-year-old, came in and said, Mom, do you want me to make you your shake? And then he came back 10 minutes later with a straw and my shake and he's like here you go good morning can you help me with my school <laughs> so cute and that made me remember you know back in the day when my kids were in school and i was a teacher actually um were they in school when i was teaching no they were in daycare at that point i quit teaching to start building my own business when my youngest started kindergarten or oldest started kindergarten and he's now uh, 14. <laughs> so <clears throat> basically what I remember of those times was super stress and super stress getting the kids ready and out the door. Super stress for me getting out the door. And let me show you this story. Okay. This is how far we've come. Back in those days, we lived on public assistance when I was pregnant. Then we rented the farmhouse that my parents owned that's just outside of Billings, Montana on the Yellowstone River. And the Yellowstone River is the largest undammed river in the United States. 
So it is a very large river and it freezes and fills with ice blocks every year. And it would flood our house every spring. <laughs> it was crazy. So <clears throat> living there, we would, and this is no joke. This is no joke. I had a vehicle that only had front wheel drive. And due to the steepness of the driveway that was north facing, any of you in snow country know, snow and ice does not melt if you are on a north facing or shaded driveway or road. And so here we are. We have this very steep driveway that went down to the farm. And at the bottom of it was a 90, de 90 degree turn where it went over a warm spring, like a ditch or a creek. And that creek wouldn't freeze but the road definitely was frozen like we hit 20 below zero here right and so what happened um this is super funny and it was hard times back then you all i kept a sled at the top of our driveway because um the previous owners of that farm they w had a couple of times where they went down that driveway and literally lost control because of the ice and went off the embankment and into the creek in fact, it was um, quite a tragedy once because their four-year-old actually drowned. So that was very much a tragedy. And that was back in the eight, nine, or, yeah, 1950s, I think, that that happened. But I was always paranoid of this happening to me. So my husband could drive my car backwards <laughs> down the road and he would be able to have enough traction but I refused to be in that vehicle with our babies because they were in daycare they were little and so what we would do if I got home before he did then I would put the kids in a sled and pull them down the hill and <laughs> go to the house and then in the morning if he had already left for work like the car is parked up at the top, right? And if we had groceries, we'd haul the groceries down on the sled. And then when, when, um, when I had to go to work in the morning, you guys, I had to be to the school before 7 a.m., depending on if I had the parking lot or bus duty that morning. And then I also had to drop the kids off at daycare. Um, and because you live in Montana, uh, whenever we travel anywhere, you put on full snow gear. Because if you end up in a ditch and you don't have on the proper snow wear, like snow pants and boots and hat and mittens and down coat and big puffy coat, then you could die because it is that cold here. So I, that was part of my morning routine. You guys, it was so stressful and always pitch black out. And here I am, bundle the kids up totally and completely, head to toe in snow gear. Do you remember the story, the Christmas story, the movie? You guys, do you remember it? And do you remember the little brother all bundled up in his snow wear. Like that's, that was my life. I guess that still is my life. But that, that, the, those little toddlers, like in their little puffy snow gear, they look like the Michelin man, right? <laughs> so I put them in the sled and I have crampons on the bottom of my boots so I don't slip down the ice. And I pull the boys up the sled up the hill every morning. And the driveway was a quarter mile long. This isn't like just a little walk down the block. No, this was serious work. So I'm like sweating and <laughs> like trying to make it to the top. Um, I know, right? No, thank you for me. I agree, Crystal. But at that time, we didn't have an another option. We couldn't afford another housing situation. We had to make do. We had to bootstrap it, literally bootstrap it. And that gave me this mindset of I can do anything I set my mind to. Okay, and I <clears throat> had to make it um, up the driveway and get the kids strapped into the car and then go down the road to teach. And here's the crazy thing, you guys, mind's blown. Are you ready? Like my kids are in daycare and I'm teaching. And at the end of the day, I made $10, 10. <laughs> I can't even believe it. You guys, our grocery bills back then were a lot smaller because Rob would hunt and I would grow food in our garden. Um, we would go to the food bank to get food. And I mean, that was our life. And the $10 would help pay for the gas to get me to and from work. I mean, I was looking at it as I'm building work experience and at least I have enough money to put in my vehicle and to contribute some to the grocery bill or to shopping at the secondhand store. That's what we did. And it was just the way things were. 
but I had this vision. I knew that we were meant for more and we were, we were very resourceful and that we were very tough and that we could create anything we set our minds to. I started to cultivate that mindset at that time. And do you know what else I did that was really, really powerful for creating the life that we have now? Visualizing. And back then, that was really before Facebook or any of these things came into existence. And because Andrew was two or three, he's 14 now, so that would have been 12 or so years ago. Think about that. That's so crazy. And that was where we lived. That was how we lived. We just had to do it. We did it for three years. And so I think that through living through hardship like that, through visualizing what was possible, and I'll be honest, you know what I would do too? I would get myself into the mindset of success, even at that time. This was before I read Think and Grow Rich. This is before I found The Universal Mind by Kelly Howell. I started to pay attention to the homes or to the grocery store, or especially organic food. I was really attracted to choosing the most toxin-free food for my family. And even at that time, I started to visualize what would it feel like if I didn't have to worry about my checks bouncing? What would it feel like if I could go to the grocery store and shop in the organic food aisle and provide organic food for my family and, and really feed them well? And yes, it was more expensive than the conventional food, but I have always had this philosophy that um, illness is more expensive, <laughs> even though, you know, immediate gratification, a lot of people are driven by that. But I chose discipline over regret. You know the Jim Rohn saying, you have the choice, two choices in life, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. You guys write that in the comments. You have the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Also, if you click the share button already, please type shared so I can shout you out. And so even at that age back then, um, I started to build this mindset of I'm going to create something better for my family where I don't have to pull my kids up a snowy, icy hill that if you go off the road, you risk dying in the creek below. Like I had to visualize something better because that was a scary time for us. And also the flooding of the basement every year, horrible. Like literally we would get four to five feet of water in our basement. For our Europeans, that is a meter to a meter and a half of water in our basement. <laughs> and <clears throat> so obviously that wasn't really a very easy life, but it was, it was the cards that I held in my hand at that time. And I made the decision to start to visualize the life that I desired. And that looked like me driving around neighborhoods that had beautiful homes. And I looked at these homes and I visualized myself. At that time, I was selling linens and then I went on to sell jewelry. Linens meaning bedding. Okay. And then I went on to sell jewelry. And so I would drive around different neighborhoods and I would look at the different homes and I would visualize myself doing a trunk show and selling the linens or the jewelry in those homes. And guess what? I can't tell you the number of times that the very home that I had looked at, I didn't know anyone in the neighborhood, but I had looked at and visualized being in and selling the products that I represented and, and ending up booking a trunk show in those homes. How? Because I would meet them at other parties or I would meet them at live uh, vendor events. Isn't that fascinating? That is the power of our mind to create what we desire. Once you harness the power of your mind, you will stop creating what you don't want in your life and you will start creating what you do want in your life. And so I made that decision at that time to use the power of visualization. And I would just visualize what would it feel like to arrive? Like I would literally like close my eyes after I'd see a house and I would close my eyes and I would imagine what would it feel like to arrive on that doorstep and bring my products through the door and set up in this beautiful home with this large entryway and the beautiful open kitchen and the dining table? How would it feel when everyone arrived and came in all excited to see what I had to offer? I would get really into these visualizations and you guys, it works. Who uses visualization in their business? I'd like to see in the comments. Um, who writes about their visualizations? What do you want to see in your life? Like, 
our CEO has done this with us many times where he's had us close our eyes and visualize what would it feel like to have your house completely decorated for Christmas, to have a catered meal and invite your friends, family, and neighbors over. The fire is crackling. The tree has presents under it, which you paid for with cash. No stress about paying off the credit card debt. <laughs> How would it feel to have a brand new white Mercedes Benz sitting in your driveway with a giant red bow on the roof? Think about that. Think about that. For me, that was a visualization that resonated because I had driven that vehicle that I was afraid I was going to go off the road on these icy roads and get stranded with two babies in the car. Like, that was very real for me. There were times that I did have a flat tire or a breakdown or whatever when I was doing those parties traveling around this region. Um, I recall one time the roads were icy, a blizzard hit. There was no hotel to stay in. And so I slept in my car and it was freezing butt ass cold. I'm going to say it because it was like, it was one of the worst nights of my life. I've had to do that twice. <laughs> and there was another time when I was driving to Wyoming, a, a small town in Wyoming to do a jewelry party. And I drove five hours for this little jewelry party, probably to make $300. And as I went down the road, I had a blowout. My tire completely blew out. I was 45 minutes away from the town. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know how to change a tire, which is so crazy to say. Um, so I called the hostess. I was so sad. I said, I'm so sorry. I don't think I can make it. This tire blew out. I'm 45 minutes from town. And she goes, oh my gosh, don't worry about it. I'm going to send my husband right over. Like this is also the spirit of Montana and Wyoming, this area, North Dakota. Um, people are so caring and giving because we do have an extreme environment. And um, yeah, she sent her husband right out. He changed that tire. We drove all the way into town together. I had to actually replace the whole via, whole um, tire and rim, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I at least made enough money at the party to pay for the tire. <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys, the things I've overcome to become the multimillionaire that I am today, I'm telling you. And here's what's fascinating. All of this happened in the last 10 to 12 years. Let that sink in. Like all of this happened. So you can build resiliency and mindset, your mindset, your ability to visualize and create the life of your dreams in a short period of time. But you've got to discipline yourself. You've got to make it a daily practice. You've got to write it in your journal. You've got to use your planner. You have to prioritize where you spend your energy. And that, my friends, will help you create the life of your dreams. Also, passion is essential. I was passionately attached to this vision that I had for my future. Passionately attached to that. And so I wasn't available to allow myself to go into negativity, gossip, drama, or emotional shutdown when I faced challenges or when I was building a new skill set or my mindset. I just did not have the allow myself to go there, right? Now, who's read The Four Agreements? Type the name of that book in the, in the um, comments below, please. The Four Agreements is an awesome book because one, agreement number two is don't take things personally. It's not about you, right? Like really what happens is people, um, they'll face a challenge and rather than seeing it as an opportunity for growth and learning, they look at it as something like a personal attack on themselves. Who's done that? Who's guilty of that? Raise your hand. Um, like people will say, oh, my product doesn't work, right? Because someone didn't want to buy it. So that doesn't matter. And what matters is you're married to the vision or the goal, but not to the process to get there. And even using the analogy of marriage is a tough one because half of marriages end in divorce today. <laughs> but um, I want you to consider marrying the vision or the goal, creating the passion, developing the passion for your business. How about developing the passion for learning, right? You've heard me say this, leaders are readers and they apply what they learn, okay? So you're reading or you're listening and when your hands are busy and your mind is free, 
right? If you're driving or if you're doing laundry or house chores or whatever, maybe you're doing yard work, whatever. Um, that's when you're listening to your personal development, right? You're building your skill set. Maybe it's a sales skill set. Maybe it's building rapport with people. Maybe it's um, planning and organizing. I don't know. Whatever it is that you are lacking, what skill are you lacking? Let's comment below. Share, me, share with me in the comments. What skill are you lacking that would take your business to the next level? And are you selling yourself short in your business? It's quite possible because a lot of people haven't a, um, created a vision of limitless possibility for themselves, right? Your vision probably is related to what you've hear, heard other people say is possible for you. And it might be in your career. I, I mean, for me, for a long time, I was attached to getting a master's degree so that I could get paid more as a teacher. But guess what? The income only went up a few thousand dollars when you got the master's degree. So if you do the math, like look at all the time you spend getting the degree. Look at all the time you um, spend paying off the debt right? <laughs> that you needed to take on to pay for the degree because you're probably not making enough money in your job already. So then you take on debt to get a degree so you can move up in pay scale. But then you realize, what have I done? Because now the new pay rank or pay grade that you receive doesn't actually pay off the debt for 20 some years. Hello, hamster on a wheel. That was us. That was us. And um, that's what happened to me when I was teaching. That's what happened to Rob when he was a PA. Um, well, he started out in construction and then decided I'm going to create my own construction business. But then he was like, actually, maybe I'll go into medicine. <laughs> and so he took on all of the debt to go back to school. And then when he got done, we had, I mean, thousands of dollars, $150,000 in debt and to pay off. And so you can imagine most of his salary went to paying off debt. And then we, we wouldn't have been out of debt until we were in around in our 50s or something and then we wouldn't have had much time left to create any sort of retirement um this is a statistic that's crazy stark and awful um 95 percent of americans will be dead or dead broke by the age of 65. do you remember the parable of the grasshopper and the ants and all of the ants are busily preparing for winter and the grasshopper is just enjoying himself <laughs> and, and not preparing at all. And then winter comes and he has nothing. And all of the ants are ready and prepared, warm and cozy and have food. <laughs> that's the, the parable. When I learned of that, I was like, oh, that's kind of like our uh, Americans in our lives. We take on all this debt. We get in all of this consumer debt. And then we haven't actually prepared for the future. Trouble, big trouble. So, um, one like I like go back to what I said. That mindset you're developing is your passion for your business, and a commitment to your business. Right? Commitment to your business. Like fall in love with your business. I don't care what your business is. It's what's creating income for you right now. So fall in love with it. Be passionate about it. Have a vision of a minimum of two years doing it. Have the good attitude. I love this quote. And it's by Goethe. For a man to achieve all that is demanded of him, he must regard himself as greater than he is. Right? I love that. Oh, let's, let's change it to for one so it can relate to men or women. For one to achieve all that is demanded of themselves, <laughs> they must regard themselves as greater than they are. It's true. You have to look at yourself as the person that you will become in the process of being financially free. And you've got to really be careful of the emotional triggers. That's why journaling is so helpful because when people journal, they can address the emotional triggers. They can see that, yeah, emotional triggers are part of doing life. They're part of building a business. That doesn't mean that we go on to Facebook and we rant about our company or our products or whatever. Like ranting about anything really is unproductive in my opinion because not only are you taking away from your productive time, but you're taking away from the people that you're influencing or that are tuning in or that you're talking to. 
What a waste of time for both of you or all of you, depending on if it was a live video or not. But basically, I, I think that there's just so much goodness and abundance in the world that if we waste our time ranting and raving and being negative, we're just taking away from creating. We're taking away from creating freedom for ourselves and for others. Um, so really being careful of staying out of the mud. I call that the mud. Yes, you're going to get some mud on your pants sometimes and, you know, skin your knees sometimes. But that doesn't mean that the sky is falling and everything is over. I used to go into that mindset early on in my personal development. And I was always creating a scenario of doom and gloom. And then I would love to share it with others so that I could influence them and prove myself right. Who is guilty of that behavior? If you're honest, you all are. <laughs> And there's times too where I know I've been talking negatively about a situation and then the person I'm, I'm talking to will commiserate with me and then we're both like, hang on, wait a minute, this is unproductive, stop, reroute, what can we talk about that's going to actually produce results, right? Have any of you guys ever found or done that where you're just like, whoa, stop the conversation, this is a waste of time. Um, okay, now I want you to... Also, commit to the daily activities that will produce results. Because again, a lot of times it's like people are just kind of spinning a lot of different plates in the air, throwing spaghetti at the wall. You guys have heard these, <laughs> these phrases, but basically it's time to get serious about what we know works. So if you can look at your business and make an intentional commitment to your goal, then break it down by the task. What is the most productive task to move the needle, right? Um, and also, I want you to think of um, your big financial goal and what that might mean, okay? I'm going to read this to you. If you want to earn more money than you can possibly spend and live a balanced and peaceful life, pay attention to your self-wealth principle. Create a goal bigger than yourself. Plan to give away $50,000 a month to a worthy cause, which you are so passionate about. This worthy cause will motivate you to build the wealth. Because do you see, if you're giving away $50,000 a month, how much money are you making? It's incredible when you think about it. Now, I want you to start to get specific passion and commitment to this big goal and start giving to whatever worthy cause stirs your heart and whatever degree of money that you can do so. And that will help you to move the needle and to stay focused. Also, write down the goals and have them posted where you can see them. If any of you um, missed it earlier, if any of you missed my introduction earlier, I'm in my robe and pajamas because this is Come As You Are Monday. <laughs> and I was going to be live with Beth and she was coming off the tennis court down in sunny Florida and is two hours ahead of me. And here in Montana, we have snow falling. It's very cold. And I was out of town over the weekend, so I slept in. And Noah, my sweetheart, brought me my breakfast in bed, my lifestyle mix. And I said to Beth, I'm going to come as I am. I'm just going to wear my robe. I'm going to show people that there are times where self-care is required. And this is what feels comfortable to me. So here I am, multimillionaire, on a live stream, in my pajamas. Why not? <laughs> And you got to have fun in your business because when you don't, you'll resent your business because we all want to have fun, right? And we will have more fun when, or more success when we have more fun in our business. Do you see? Okay. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this Motivation Monday. Hopefully we will be able to be on, back on track with our um, <laughs> live streams next week and our interviews, but I don't know what's going on. We are not able to get these live streams working because of the sound. If any of you know why, please drop a comment. But we were having so many, so many problems with echoing. Rob was trying to go live last night with Cheyenne, and I was live today with Beth. 
So watch for our videos. We're going to be sharing, Beth and I will share our videos on each other's pages. And then that will help you guys to see what she meant to talk about today. <laughs> it's such a bummer that you couldn't see it. Um, thanks, Sarah. Thank you so much. And enjoy your day as well. I'm excited for, to see what comes. This week, I want you to commit to courage. Okay, write that in the comments. I am committed to being courageous. I am committed to being courageous. We all have courage naturally. And, it, you know, you will become more courageous and have more self-confidence the more you take action in that way. But if you spend more time in fear and spinning the stories and self-doubt and taking things personally, then you'll feel more stuck and stagnant. That's just the natural course of action. And so um, just make a commitment this week to be more committed to being courageous. And also, guess what? You get paid every Tuesday. So what would happen if you tripled your effort this week? What would happen if you reached out to three times more people, helped them get started? What would happen? Your paycheck would reflect it come Tuesday next week. That's how incredible this business is. Is it doesn't matter if you've taken some time off or you've gotten emotionally derailed. You're back now. You're watching these Monday motivations every week. <laughs> You're tuning in. You're showing up. So here's the thing. The question is, what would happen if I tripled my effort this week on what matters? Because that's the other piece. A lot of people will say, oh, I'm working and I'm working really hard. But they're not spending the productive time and the productive tasks. Do You see, they're kind of just spinning their wheels and then they get burnt out as a result. So type that in the question in the comments then. What would happen if I tripled my effort? What would happen? And if you committed to tripling or even doubling your effort this week, would you do it every day? You have to write this down. You have to get committed to it. Write it down. I will triple my effort every day this week or I will double my effort for the next two weeks straight, see how it goes, reevaluate, and then may I, I might triple my effort for the last two weeks of December. I don't know, but it's up to you. You have to make a plan. If you don't have a plan, someone else will plan your life for you. Okay? So that's how you create freedom. Okay, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed today. If you did, please drop a comment and let me know. And I am looking forward to seeing you all again on Monday of next week. And with our next interview, and I might have to try it with Beth again because we weren't able to go live today, but I will share her video in my comments here so that you can catch that as well. So thanks for tuning in and I hope you guys have an awesome Monday. This is going to be an incredible week according to what you believe, what you think, and what you do. And my final piece of homework for you is for you to go and get Think and Grow Rich for Network Marketers on iTunes and listen to that this week, specifically listening to chapters one and two. And if Blair Critch was on here, she would say, watch the movie Think and Grow Rich. It's on Amazon Prime. And she watches it every single week. These, are two, these resources are um, something that I've done now for the last seven years. And truly, it's, I see results of people that apply this to their lives and really truly believe it and they act in faith, they take inspired action and it works. Okay, so who's committed to Think and Grow Rich? Type that in the comments if you are and I'll see you on Monday next week. Talk to you soon.